Hi guys, uh, this is another example to uh, talk about mixed strategy in Ash Equilibrium. Uh, well, here uh, the question is, uh, what is or what are the Nash equilibrium of this game? Well, I'm not going to fully solve it. I'll just uh, sort of uh, make some argumentation about important points. Um, so here, um, first, always try to figure out uh, the dominated strategies, all right? Uh, meaning find the rationalizable strategies because the game uh, may, may consist of uh, a smaller set of rationalizable strategies, uh, which is easier to work with. So, for example, if some of those are not rationalizable, that means, you know, the players will never play them, all right? And hence, you can ignore them. So, that, uh, so one thing is, is very important. If a strategy uh, profile S, S1 all the way up to Sn, is Nash equilibrium, then all SIs are rationalizable, okay? So that's a very, very important statement. Meaning, um, if you find a, a strategy that is strictly dominated, if SI is strictly dominated, for player I, obviously, for player, because it's player I's strategy, well then, SI can never be a part of Nash equilibrium. Well, I think this is quite obvious. Why is that so? Well, in order to be a part of Nash equilibrium, it means SI must be a best response to something else, right? Some minus I, uh, some other uh, strategy profile of the others, other players. But the thing is, SI is strictly dominated. Uh, so what, what does that mean? Well, if something is strictly dominated, it means the payoff of SI, that there's some other strategy, right? Sigma I, um, sigma minus I, greater than, strictly greater than UI, SI, sigma minus I, for every sigma minus I. All right, so what does that mean? That means whatever belief you have, whatever belief player I has, uh, there's going to be strategy, sigma I, it could be mixed, could, could be more, but doesn't matter. The thing is, SI will never be a best response. All right, so therefore, this condition will never hold for SI. Uh, if it is strictly dominated, and hence uh, it cannot be part of Nash equilibrium, all right? As, as, as simple as this. So therefore, if you want to find Nash equilibrium, pure or mixed, doesn't matter, you may benefit eliminating strictly dominated strategies first and simplify the game. Here, however, there is no strictly dominated strategies, at least in pure strategies, all right? And I'm not going to look for mixed strategy domination because there isn't. All right, uh, well, this is, by the way, a rock, paper, scissors game. I, I don't know if I for, forgot to say this. And um, so whenever they choose the same strategy, rock, rock, paper, paper, it's a tie. Otherwise, rock beats paper, oh, I'm sorry, pa uh, paper covers rock, so the winner is the paper guy. And then rock uh, crashes uh, scissors, so the rock guy is the winner. And then uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the scissors, uh, going to be crushed by rock, so the rock guy is going to be the winner, all right? So in this game, if you look at the pure strategy in Ash Equilibrium, there is none, very much like the uh, matching pennies. Why is that? Well, because if player two plays rock, the best response is papers. But if the second player plays papers, the best response is scissors. And if the second player plays scissors, the best response is rock. Now, if the first guy plays rock, the best response is paper. If, if he plays paper, the best response is scissors. And if he plays scissors, the best response is rock. So you see, there is no uh, payoff uh, tuples where I uh, underline both. And so that means, uh, you know, there is no uh, strategy profile where both players are best responding to each other. And hence, there's no Nash equilibrium in pure strategies. You may just attempt to find, okay, let's call this P1, P2, 1 minus P1 minus P2, Q1, Q2, 1 minus Q1 minus Q2, and do all the analysis 
uh, that we applied uh, in the uh, matching pennies game and find the value of P1, P2, uh, Q1, Q2 to figure out the Nash equilibrium. This is, a, by the way, a long, a little bit complicated exercise, but I think you should do at least once. But I'm not going to do it. Uh, instead, the, the, there is a Nash equilibrium of this game. It's a unique Nash equilibrium, which is, by the way, the following. One third, one third, one third. All right, so this is sigma i. What does that mean? And i is one, two. Meaning, in Nash equilibrium, both players f f play the same strategy. And in this strategy, they randomize with equal probabilities over all three strategies, paper, rock, scissors. That basically means player's optimal strategy is to become unpredictable. All right, why does it make sense? Well, if you look at this game, let's ignore those P's and Q's. Uh, it just complicates the picture. So when you look at this game, uh, what you see is that, uh, or if you think about it a little, what you see is that being predictable is not a good strategy in this game, right? Um, for example, let's say I am player one and all right, so meaning I play uh, a rock. So obviously, I hope my opponent is going to play scissor and so that I'm going to win, right? That, that's the only way to win uh, when I choose rock. So I am about to, you know, uh, sort of fist my, uh, I'm sorry, a hand uh, to show the, my choice is rock. But the thing is, let's suppose my opponent uh, completely predicts my action, all right? So she knows that I'm going to choose rock. She, she, she can read my mind, let's suppose. So if she believes uh, or if she knows that I'm going to choose, about to choose rock, what is she going to do? Is she going to play scissors? Well, no. If she knows that I'm going to play uh, rock, she will certainly go for a uh, paper, right? Because the paper uh, beats, uh, sort of covers rock, and so the paper can win. Um, and remember, in this game, everybody is trying to maximize his or her payoff, and we are choosing our actions independently and, and simultaneously. So that means if she can read my mind uh, and, and know that I'm going to choose, about to choose rock, she's actually not going to choose scissors, but she's going to choose paper, and so I'm going to lose. Well, what if she, what if I, 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 I am about to choose paper instead? And in this case, I know that there's only one way that I can win. If I choose paper, my opponent should be uh, picking rock, right? But again, if my opponent, the second player, can read my mind, and or if I become completely predictable, uh, you know, in some way, well, then that means she's not going to go for rock. Uh, because she knows that I'm going to pick paper. And so in this case, she's going to actually choose scissors. And so I'm going to lose a dollar instead of winning a dollar. You see what I mean? So whatever strategy I pick, if my opponent, uh, I'm sorry, whatever strategy I pick, uh, if, um, if, if my sort of strategy is, is uh, predictable, all right, so because of the structure of this game, if it is predictable that I'm going to choose paper or rock or scissors in some way, I, I make it uh, clear that I'm going to choose rock or paper or scissors, well, then there's no way I can win this game, all right? So therefore, maybe the best strategy is to be unpredictable. And this is exactly what the mixed strategy is, in fact, capturing in this game, right? Unpredictability is the optimal thing to do. Uh, but how so? I mean, for example, I mean, this is also unpredictable, right? One half, one half, zero. I mean, partially unpredictable. I mean, um, my opponent knows that I will certainly not play. So this is scissors, this is uh, uh, rock, this is paper. So my opponent certainly knows that I'm not going to play scissors, okay? So she knows that I'm going to either play rock or paper. Well, now, because she's an expected utility maximizer, she's going to calculate her expected payoff. And then, in fact, if she calculates her expected payoff, so she knows that if she chooses rock, I mean, it, it, it doesn't really have to be an expected payoff, right? Because I think it's quite, quite obvious. So if she chooses rock, right? I'm not going to play S. So let's erase this. So she knows that. Um, so she's going to get either zero or minus one if she chooses rock. 
But if she chooses paper, she's going to get plus one or zero. Uh, well, clearly paper uh, is a better strategy than uh, uh, rock. Well, scissor is minus one plus one. So with equal probabilities, it's expected payoff. Zero here, it's one health. Here, it's minus one health. So here, clearly, my opponent is going to go for paper. Well, again, if I choose rock, right, with half a probability, I'm going to be choosing rock. The paper is going to beat it. With half a probability, I'm going to choose paper. So paper, paper, it's going to be tied. So that means if I follow a strategy like this and become predictable in, in some way, all right, well, then there's no way I can win a dollar. Uh, the best thing is going to happen is, is, you know, a tie. So you see what I mean? So being predictable is no good. All right. But being unpredictable in this fashion is also not good. So you should be, uh, I'm going to call it vaguely, uh, completely uh, unpredictable. Well, obviously you can, you know, argue even further and say, well, okay, but why one third, one third, one third? Why not, for example, I don't know. I mean, one, four, one, four and one half, right? So here, Again, uh, I mean, this is, isn't this a perfect predictability? Well, kind of, yes. I mean, whatever perfect predictability, unpredictability means, I just vaguely used it. But here, my opponent is an expected utility maximizer, right? So she's gonna calculate her expected payoff. And so here, she knows that there's a big weight, a probability weight on me choosing uh, scissors. So that's actually, yes, not making me perfectly predictable, but it's kind of making me predictable. And nevertheless, uh, given the payoff structure and given this belief, uh, she is actually going to play a certain action, uh, which is in this case, uh, paper again, I believe. Uh, oh, because I'm gonna choose scissors with a highly probability, probably she's gonna choose rock. Um, her best response is going to be a rock, probably. And so that means uh, the winning under this probability and winning a dollar under this probability for me is going to be less than winning a dollar under this probability. So you see what I mean? So my expected payoff under this strategy, yes, I am indifferent between these two, but the thing is my probability here uh, given that she knows this, obviously she's, she's, she's not going to play one third, one third, one third. So therefore, uh, given I play this, my expected payoff will be less than this. So therefore, yes, I want to be unpredictable, but I also want to uh, get the highest payoff uh, possible for me. Uh, so therefore, you see what I mean? Uh, the mixed strategy, um, you can interpret it as some games, uh, being unpredictable is, 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 is definitely a better strategy. And, 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 and this is why sort of uh, a mixed strategy uh, makes sense. Uh, nobody wants to become predictable. All right, so you can interpret a mixed strategy in this way. But don't forget there are many games where uh, there are many Nash equilibrium, um, including both pure and mixed strategies. And in fact, uh, Uh, this game is one of them. So the matching pennies and the uh, rock, paper, scissors games have only one Nash equilibrium, which are pure. So, but the boxing, opera, boxing, opera, this battle of the sexes game, if you remember. Uh, so if you look at this game, there are two pure Nash equilibrium, uh, BB and opera opera all right so with the payoffs two one and one two but there's also a mix a mixed nash equilibrium also exists um i don't remember the probabilities but i think as far as i remember one third two third probabilities and and and, and the expect if you if you calculate the expected payoffs what you're gonna see is that the nash equilibrium well Let's find it. Uh, let's say it's 14. So I'm going to very quickly find the mixed strategy here. So let's call this P1 minus P, Q1 minus Q. So here, uh, it's going to be very, very quick. Um, so uh, payoff of player one, if he plays B, sigma two, is equal to, therefore, two Q, uh, that's it. Her, his payoff is under opera is equal to uh, one minus Q. So therefore B is a best response if 
two q greater than one, oops, one minus, this is one minus, uh, one minus q, which is equivalent to saying q is greater than one third. So therefore, if this is p, if this is q, this is one, let's say this is one, okay? So if q is greater than one third, let's say this is one over three. If <clears throat> q is greater than one third, the best response for player one uh, is uh, a B, meaning uh, choosing P equals one. So this part, very good. And when Q is less than one third, uh, best response is O, which means P equals zero. And when P is equal to one third, all these points. Okay, so this is the best response for the uh, first player. If you do the best response for the second player, so u2 uh, sigma 1 b, so her expected perf is just p, and u2 sigma 1 uh, opera is her expected perf 2 1 minus p, so therefore b is a best response for her, or b is equal to q equals 1, uh, if and only if, Right? P is greater than 2 minus 2P, or P is greater than 2 over 3rd. So here it's 2 over 3rd, so whenever P is greater than 2 over 3rd, Q is equal to 1. And whenever it's less than, it should be P equals 0, sorry. And whenever Q equals, uh, P equals 2 thirds, all these points. So you see, this is the best response of the second player. Again, if you need time, uh, just do it by yourself uh, slowly. Uh, but for this game, these are the best response uh, functions. So this point is one of the points that uh, these best response correspond, uh, uh, mm, uh, cross. This is the second point. This is the third point. What is this point? This point refers to P equals Q equals zero. This point refers P equals Q equals one. This point corresponds to uh, P equals two third, uh, Q equals one third. All right, so this point basically, the first Nash equilibrium is P zero, Q zero, which means OO Nash equilibrium. All right, so this is OO strategy profile. Therefore, this is BB. And this guy is the mixed Nash. All right, so here under BB, the payoffs are two, one. Under OO, the payoffs are 1, 2. If you calculate the Nash equilibrium strategies here, what is the, uh, so it's, what is P? P is 2 third, 1 third, 1 minus P. Uh, this is for player 1. And for player 2, Q is equal to 1 third, 2 third. So this is what the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is. And the corresponding payoff, corresponding Expected payoff, obviously, uh, corresponding to this uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is what? Um, so when P is equal to uh, uh, two third, all right, you can just calculate it. Expected payoff of player two of playing B is two third. Uh, if you do this map, uh, I'm sorry, P is equal to two third. So this utility is also two third. So therefore, if you calculate this, the second guy's expected payoff is two third. What about the first guy? The first guy's payoff is two times Q. Uh, I don't really need to multiply this two times Q with two third because remember uh, under mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, playing B and playing O give exactly the same payoff. So when you mix them, you're gonna still get the same payoff, all right? So therefore, you don't really multiply them again with two third, one third. So here, whenever Q is, so Q is one third, so therefore, uh, uh, her expected payoff, uh, no, I'm sorry, the player one's expected payoff is also two third. So two third is around 0 0.67, around 0 0.67, 0 0.67, which is clearly less than two one or one two. So you see what I mean? The, what does that mean? So if you remember the efficiency, uh, the Proto efficiency, the pure Nash equilibrium, BB and OO, Predo dominates, Predo dominates, or more efficient than the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. 
because uh, you know both pure Nash equilibrium gives both players strictly higher payoff than the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. But again, uh, there may be inefficient Nash equilibria, and this is just one very good example. The question is, you know, why this is a Nash equilibrium? Well, this Nash equilibrium actually captures the idea of coordination problem, right? I mean, imagine a game that you are playing this game with your partner. Am I, I mean, should I buy a boxing ticket or opera ticket for tonight's event and I have to do it now without being able to communicate with my partner? I want to go to boxing. My partner wants to go to opera. So everybody wants to try to maximize his or her payoff. And you know, we have to choose our actions independently. We can't communicate. So the thing is, the Nash equilibrium here, BBOO, they actually represent the cases where these two guys somehow perfectly coordinate with their actions. But actually in this environment, if these two guys, let's say they are new, newly wed, or I don't know, they started you know, dating a few weeks ago, so they don't really know each other. So the coordination problem could probably be a, a, a much more serious issue for them. And so they may actually end up you know, one guy buying a boxing ticket and the other buying a, an opera ticket. And so this, the third Nash equilibrium, which is inefficient, but it actually captures, uh, I think, a very a real uh, part of this game, which is the coordination problem. Um, okay.